working? It's working. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Proverbs chapter 1, Wisdom crieth without, she utters her voice in the streets. The wisdom of God is that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone is able to save. Nothing else can save like the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us, of all our sins. For the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The wisdom of God is that you can have eternal hope. You can have eternal being with God in heaven through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Religion cannot save you. Your works cannot save you. You cannot get God's good and pleasing by being a good person. For the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. For all have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's a problem. The wisdom is that you're going to die one day. The wages of sin is death. The wisdom is the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is wisdom. That is what you need to know. That's what you need to believe on. Upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Cries out in the streets.
How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will you keep on going being simple? How long will you keep on going in the arrogance of your thoughts and your ideas and what man teaches? How long will you go without God and what He has said, what He has told you to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How long will you keep on going wishing and hoping that the Bible is not true? How long will you keep on going at the words of a preacher before you about salvation? Will you keep on thinking, I hope he's wrong. I hope God is wrong. I hope the Bible's incorrect. And yet the Bible is true, God is correct. And God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Without Jesus Christ, you will enter into the lake of fire that burneth forever. And you will burn there in tragedy, you will burn there in pain, you will burn there in suffering, you will burn there in torment with Satan, who has caused you to be a, believe in a lie. Who the God of this world has blinded the, the light, has blinded the eyes, has blinded the people to think that what we preach is wrong. Your simplicity will get you into hell. Your belief on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved will get you to heaven. Will ye simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning? There are some of you today here as one of these vendors. You mock the word of God being preached to you every week. You mock that a guy will get up and preach to you the way of life through Jesus Christ. You wish he shut up. You wish the word of God be found. You wish you could have your radio even louder than the preacher. You mock the word of God and God will one day as you face him, God will mock you. Prepare to meet thy God. God is not willing that any should perish, but the mockers of the Word of God, the mockers of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died and buried and was rose from the dead. You mock that, God will mock you. There is no hope in someone who has degraded the Word of God. There is no hope when someone makes fun of Jesus Christ. There is no hope that the message being preached that you take it lightly. There is no hope. The only hope you have is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Week after week after week we try to be here, we preach Jesus. Jesus God. God Jesus. We preach the salvation through the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Nothing else. We don't ask for your money. We don't ask for you to join us. We ask you to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. And yet, you mock the Word of God. Prepare to meet the wrath of God. You fool. That's in the Bible. You're foolish. You're foolish that you can think you can out-talk God. Every idle word, Matthew 7 says, every idle word that man shall speak, you'll give an account one day. Jesus Christ said to Paul, Why persecutest thou me, Paul? And yet Paul never persecuted Jesus Christ. He persecuted Christians. And when you persecute Christians with a Bible in hand and Bible out of their lips, Jesus Christ takes it personally. You're mocking the Word of God that's being preached. You're not mocking me. And who cares what you say about me? Who cares what you think about me? It's what your attitude is to the Word of God, you scorner. And you may call us foolish. And the Bible says what we are doing is foolish, but the message we have is the hope of eternal life that Jesus saves in Jesus alone. What do you got to offer us out of your boots? What can you give us that can give us eternal life, that can give us peace, that can give us no more suffering, that can give us the eternity to be with God? Your watermelon? Your money? And yet the Bible says the wages of sin is death. 
you will face death one day, and you'll face God. Face God by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. What are you going to give for an exchange of your soul, scorner? You're going to offer God watermelon? You're going to offer Him tomatoes? That's property of God. That's a blessing of God. And you don't even thank God for what you have. Imagine never thanking God for giving you something that you make your living off of. And you can make a greater living, an eternal living, by His Son, Jesus Christ. Cain bought the fruit of the ground, and God says, I'm not pleased. Abel brought the blood of the Lamb, and God says, I'm well pleased with that. you got to bring the blood of the Lamb of God for your sin, and God will be pleased with anything else God will reject. And rejection by God means God telling you to go to hell. John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. You may not like the Bible being preached to you, but Romans chapter 10, God says, I like them feet. Do it. I don't care what you think, I am here to please God, and God says, preach the gospel. And nothing else. Scorners. And fools hate knowledge. You do not want to know what God has to say. The Bible says you're a fool. That guy has a problem. He's going without God and he'll burn in hell. That's the problem. And you are fools according to the Bible chapter 1 of Proverbs because you do not want to know what God has to say. You don't care what God has to say. You do not want to know the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible says you are foolish. The Bible says that someone comes up, oh, there's no God. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. If you proclaim to be an atheist today, God, who you do not believe in, prepare to meet thy God, calls you a fool. have no place in the Bible. 198 fools in the Bible. And only two of them have a good saying, a good word. All the rest are against God. Turn you at my reproof. Turn. Repent. Turn from your sins that are going to lead you to heaven, to hell. Be sorry that you're a sinner. There is one sin that will get you into the gates of hell. Rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior, as the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, that will get you into hell. You are a sinner. There is no way that you can say that, oh, I've never sinned. First John says you're a liar. One lie. One lie concentrate you as a sinner. One lie. And we all lie. Somewhere in our life we have lied. You're a sinner. How about you men? Whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery. You look at that woman with a dirty thought, God says the account of adultery is already on your heart. You don't have to go into bed with her. You just got to think it. The act of murder. You don't have to do a murder. You just have to think about murdering. The very thought makes you a sinner. The very first commandment, God first. No 
one puts God first in their lives. No one. You're a sinner. And you have need of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Without that Lamb of God, you will be charged, you will be guilty of sin. And that guilt of sin will cast you off in the lake of fire which burneth forever. If you to have yourself washed by the blood of, blood of Jesus Christ, your sin debt will be canceled. It will be erased through the blood of Jesus Christ. If you, if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. You can be washed. You can be clean by the blood of Jesus Christ, who is God, and God is Jesus. And through that record of having your sins washed, that is your access, that is your way to the Father. By Jesus who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot say I'm going to heaven and not believe on Jesus Christ. You cannot say I'm going to God without Jesus Christ. You can't get there by Mary. You can't get there by religion. You can't get there by Allah. You can't get there for by being a good person. There is no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. If you're to repent, it says, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. You cannot know the Bible until you know the God in Jesus Christ of the Bible. And your very reasoning, if you say that Bible is wrong, that Bible is incorrect, that Bible is written by man, you are outside the will of God. Because the only way you can get the Word of God and know the Word of God is by your belief in Jesus Christ. And God said, if you will step out, if you will step forward and receive God's Son, Jesus Christ, by faith, you will get His Spirit, you will get the knowledge of the Word, you will get eternal hope. But without it, you're a fool. Without you, you have no wisdom, you have no knowledge, you have no understanding. Even with doctrine, even with diplomas on your wall, without Jesus Christ, you are ignorant of God. And you won't survive death. Because I have called, ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. We have been here for four years. Four years of preaching the gospel, and not one of you have come out. You are living proof of Proverbs chapter 1. Believe it or not, your rejection of God is found in the Bible. Jesus said, Broad is the way, and many shall go in the way of destruction. But few that will find the gate of life. Few will enter into that gate, that door called Jesus Christ. The many, the more that you are. Rejecting the Word of God, you are found. I just read your passage in Proverbs chapter 1. See, God didn't say, go out there and preach the gospel, get them saved, and they'll come by the masses. God said, preach the gospel. And what we do by preaching the gospel, so is the racetrack. What we do by preaching the gospel is what God has proclaimed, and it's up to you to believe or reject. We're just called to preach the gospel. It is your ability, it is your choice to believe on the words that we preach. And yet your rejection, found in the scriptures, will get you the way that's the lake of fire, and there's no way out of that lake of fire, ever. Never. You might as well just go jump in a fire right now. Bible says, scorners, you have rejected God's word by your scorning, and God will scorn you one day. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. You ought to fear. 
Proverbs also says to fear the Lord. It is wisdom. The fear of the Lord is knowledge. The fear of the Lord is understanding. You will have no wisdom, no knowledge, and no understanding of God because you don't fear Him. You are a generation void of the fear of God and there's no hope. And no one that will not... Look it up. That's what I'm doing. Look it up to God. Look it up to Jesus Christ. No fear of God and your life is doomed. It's damned. It's condemned. But ye have set at not all my counsel. And with none of my reproof. You won't listen. I know you won't listen. And yet there may be people here who've never been here before and will hear the gospel for the first time. Lord willing. As long as you have customers, we'll be here with the gospel. By the Constitution of the United States of America, we can preach the gospel right here. Thank you, God, for being here. There are people who enjoy the gospel being preached. As long as there are customers here, we will preach the gospel. As long as you are here as vendors, there is still hope. The hopelessness happens when you die without Jesus Christ and there's nothing more you can do. There are no prayers, there are no candles, there is no money to get your soul out of hell after you die. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now, today, before you die. Because once you die, you cannot change. You cannot redo. You cannot restart. If you choose to reject Jesus Christ and you die with that choice, you will pay that penalty for all eternity. If you choose to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior before you die, you will get the hope of the glory. You will get the hope of God. You'll get the hope to be in heaven, a new body, sinless. No pain, no sorrow, no more tears. The finished work of Jesus Christ upon Calvary is that Jesus died according to the Scriptures. And He was buried. And He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You say, hey, you're, you're loud. You're too loud. So is those race cars. I can hear those race cars from here. So instead of petroleum and oil and a bunch of idiots making left-hand turns, why don't we do the right way, Jesus' way, God's way? Why don't we lift up our voice and praise God through Jesus Christ, our Lord? That pleases God. All these people here, left-hand turn, left-hand turn, left-hand turn, you just end up where you started. But if you were to come to Jesus Christ today and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you get a new beginning. And when you die, the Bible says you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. If you die without Jesus Christ, they will bury you. You'll wake up in hell with your eyes being tormented, with your tongue being dry. Oh, just give me a little drop of water. God is sending you a gift, His Son. God is not willing. He is long-suffering. He is not willing that any should perish. Go to Him. Tell them. Believe on Jesus to be saved. And you'll have all eternity to thank the Gospel. Not me. You believe on Jesus Christ and you will have all eternity to thank Him for it. It will not be me, because the Bible says, when I go to heaven, I'll get a new name. So why even tell you my name today? It's going to be changed. But why not the name of Jesus Christ that will be forever? Jesus Christ, a name that eternity. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Check out John chapter 1, verse 1. Check out First uh, John 5, 7 about that word in Jesus Christ. They're the same. And they're the words that can get you salvation. They are the words and the name that every knee 
shall bow, and every knee shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Confess now on your knees that Jesus Christ can be your Savior. Believe right now that Jesus can save your soul. Believe right now that Jesus can wash away your sins. Do it now, and you get eternal glory forever. Now God speaking in Proverbs chapter 1, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. That's God speaking. Imagine you going too far. You have rejected, you have violated the word of God too far, and you come to a crisis in your life. He says, God, I need help. <laughs> You didn't want to believe me then. You didn't want to believe my words. But Lord God, I need help. Ha, 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 ha. You had your chance. That is a scary... That God may not ever listen to you. Because you have rejected. You have scorned. You have taken the place of a fool. You get to the point in your life that God will not listen to you. You are in trouble. I read it, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 26. Some of you may get in a spot that God is not going to listen. Listen, my friend. I tell you, God has got a reservation for you. Uh, not nice, but my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. As much as you laugh at God today and last week and the week before, you may get to the chance in your life that God will laugh at you in your trials and tribulations. When you stand before God, the great white throne judgment, God, I have Mary. <laughs> Go to hell. But God, didn't we do this? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Ha, 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 ha. Go. Then you'll be scared, but it's too late. You need to believe and trust on Jesus Christ before you die, because hell's coming if you don't. If you don't believe it, you don't want to trust it, you're a fool, according to the Bible, Proverbs chapter 1. You are a fool. I didn't say that. God, the Holy Spirit, said that. I call you an idiot, but the Bible says you're a fool. Let's read further. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anger cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but I shall not find me. Once you die without Christ, once you die without the hope, once you die without the Lamb of God, you've got no life. You know, if you, for, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on Him has eternal life. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you believe on Jesus, that is life. Let me tell you what happens when you don't believe on Jesus. shall suffer the wrath of God. You know what hell is? According to John 3.36, the wrath of God is hell, and hell is the wrath of God. And as you scream and cry out in torture, God ain't going to listen to you. You will die godless as much as your life is godless. There's no mercy in hell. 
There's no grace in hell. There is no hope in hell. And when you read the Gospel of Luke, the account of the man that's in hell, he has needs, he has wants, but he does not want to get out of hell. Because he has learned by God's judgment, this is where I belong. I just wish I had some relief. I wish you'd go to my parents. I wish you'd go to my family. I wish you'd go to my friends and preach about this place so they don't come. Gospel of Luke. There are people in hell right now that are rooting for us that preach the gospel to you. How's that? God bless you, brother. Be blessed. Highly favored. Amen. Power, power from above. There are people in hell today that are saying, Preach it, brother. We're not brothers, but preach it, brother. Your family your friends don't want you in hell. The party has been canceled due to the fire. You will not see your friends because the place of hell is spoken of darkness. Light is God. So you can't have light in hell because light is God and you're godless. You will not have light. You cannot have water in hell. Because Jesus said, I'm the water of life. And without Jesus Christ, you'll get no water. The blessed hope, Titus 2.13, you'll have no hope in hell. Because you have chosen to reject the eternal hope, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will not be in hell, so you'll be without hope. Because you want to be godless today. And Allah, and Mary, and the Pope, and your pastor, and your water, and your church cannot save you. Hell will be full of people who are baptized. Hell will be filled full of Baptist church members. Imagine you going to God with Mary, and God opened up the Bible in the, in the uh, John chapter 4, and repeating the words of Mary, Whatsoever my son saith, do it! And Jesus said, believe on me, not my mother. Jesus said, believe on the word, not my mother. In fact, you check your Bible, it never says, mother... He calls Mary woman. Check it out. King James Bible. Proverbs chapter 1. For they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are people across this street that hate. And yet you'll say, oh, we love. No, you hate the gospel. You hate the preaching. You wish I were to shut up. And again, you are found in Proverbs chapter 1. Did you know that you're hating... Your scorning is found in the very pages of the Bible you reject. Isn't that interesting? You are found in the pages of the Bible, and your conduct towards God makes me more of a Bible believer. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what I think. And this you can, I, I think, it can be thrown in the garbage can. Of course, I don't want to say garbage can too loud around here. I think when you stand on the wrong side of God, Revelation 20, I most guarantee Proverbs chapter 1 will be brought back to you. Because there you are. 
Proverbs chapter 1 today, I have read and I have described you. Foolish, scorner, simple, rejecting, hating. That's most of you. Not all, but that is most of you. Hey, I get reports. People tell me that I don't care. But I do care about you facing God, and I want you to face God by Jesus Christ alone. I want you to be on God's right side. And that right side is Jesus Christ, who literally, right now, according to Acts chapter 1, is seated on God's right side. I want you to meet God through Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved. You'll be lifted up. You'll be a child of God. You'll be saved. You will have eternal life by your faith and trust in the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Eternal life is through Jesus Christ alone. This man's got a barbecue pit over here. Why don't you go lay in it? Why don't you say, Sir, open that up and let me lay in that flame. You'd be foolish. And yet you're telling God, I won't receive Christ, so just throw me into the flame. Now that man's got meat that has been dead. It died. That chicken and that whatever he's cooking over there will never feel pain again. And yet when God catches you off into hell, you'll be alive. And you will feel. And you will suffer. And you will be in torment. And that's no relief. Forever. When time will stop and time will be no more, you'll be in that lake of fire. And you will not come out. Because you have chosen to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. You have told God through the gospel, I'll do it my way. Thank you very much. You see, God, what I'm doing is more important and better than Jesus Christ, your Son, who is God. You see, God, I'm gooder than Jesus, if you're not going to believe on Jesus. God, my religion is better than the cross. God, I'll just wipe away the burial of Jesus Christ because there is no God. My baptism is better than the resurrection, God. Everything I have done, God, is better than Jesus Christ. That's what you're saying. When you don't choose Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are saying that you are better than Jesus. And I would not want to be standing in your shoes when you face Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment. I like to see you try to tell Jesus you're better than he is. I bet you fear God then. Then again, probably some of you will not. Hell is real. How real is hell? Jesus Christ left heaven to be born in Bethlehem, laid in the manger, and traveled six miles to Calvary. From Calvary to Bethlehem is six miles. Three and a half years. 
And the finished work was not finished because he came out of that grave alive. And then, when he came out of that grave alive, it became finished for your soul. And when you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you will never lose your salvation. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. And when you trust on Jesus as your Savior, God will never deny you the eternal life that Jesus Christ paid for your soul. But if you choose to reject Jesus Christ, God will deny you into heaven and cast you off into hell. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. You won't listen. Maybe somebody will, but most of you will not. They shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You can pay for your own sin. Yes, it's possible. You can have Jesus pay for your sins or you can pay for your own sins. But when Jesus pays for your sins, you go to heaven. When you pay for your own sins, you go off in the lake of fire for all eternity. That's how you pay for your sins. 24 hours Jesus suffered and died and bled that we may be cleansed. All eternity for you to do what Jesus did in 24 hours. The Lamb of God, 24 hours suffered and died and bled that you may have eternal life. Reject that Lamb of God. And you'll spend eternity paying for your own sins that was already paid by Jesus, but you choose not to receive that gift of God. It's your choice. It is your choice by God that if you want to go to heaven or if you want to go to hell. It's a free will. Not everybody goes to heaven. I'm sorry. Jews would not want to see Adolf Hitler in heaven. Proverbs chapter 1. But whosoever hearketh unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Trust and obey. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? That's the question. Anything else but the Lamb, but Jesus Christ, but the finished work of God, is hell. Anything else. No Jesus, no eternal life. And that's what we come to you preach every week, Jesus. We don't have a table, we don't have munchies, we don't have food, we don't have drinks, we don't have a money box. We have the eternal hope in the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Keep your money. I don't want it. But come to Jesus Christ and put your faith and trust in the finished work of the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures.
is no eternal relief outside of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. None. God does not take church. He does not take baptism. He does not take goodness outside of Jesus Christ's goodness. He doesn't take cash, check, or money order. He does not take work. He takes the blood of Jesus Christ. No blood, no entrance. And the blood of Jesus Christ is not to be taken orally. If you eat and drink the blood and body of Jesus Christ, you are a carnival. Carnivals eat flesh. Christians believe by faith, not of work, least any man both. You're going to die one day. That's a fact. And if the Bible's correct, without Jesus, you will burn in hell. And we stand here to preach the gospel that you may not. And if you end up in hell, in eternal life, that's your own choice. 